How are you feeling, bub? You getting better? How's your neck? Smudge is equal parts love and worry for me. Always in some sort of trouble. And this is the story of the fight between Smudge, the raccoon, and myself yesterday. So as you probably know, I live with my French Bulldog, Tui, six years old, and my Boston Terrier, Smudge, two years old. And yesterday, we were on a bushwalk. There's a bushwalk near my, my house, which is about a mile and a half, two miles long. And uh, we we're about halfway through that walk, and a raccoon passed across the path in front of us. And two is restrained enough, she won't do anything. But Smudge is young and foolish, and so he just chased after the raccoon, even though I was screaming after him, stop, stop! And, uh, and I started chasing after him, but it was too late. The raccoon had turned around to defend itself and was attacking Smudge and actually had Smudge on the ground, tearing at him. And so I jumped in and grabbed Smudge and tried to pull him away, but the, the raccoon had sort of latched onto his neck and bitten through his neck. And so I didn't want to pull too hard and just rip the neck, neck out. So I started beating on that raccoon, just smashing it on the face as hard as I could. Now, how hard I can smash, I don't know, because the last fight I was in was with my sister when I was 10 years old, and that was mostly scratching and hair pulling, but I was doing my best. I was pounding away at that raccoon, trying to get in, screaming, let go, let go, and, and Smudge was screaming, and the raccoon was screaming, it was quite the sight, and, and I was just terrified, because there was a lot of blood coming out, and oh, it, was, oh, it was, my adrenaline was pumping, and I was just smashing it on the face, and it took a while. I was focusing on the eyes, and finally it let go and ran off. And poor Smudge was there in my, in my hand and you know, sort of, you know, I could see blood pumping out of his, um, his neck around his, his, uh, to, uh, near his jaw here. And I was freaking out. So I, I, I put as much pressure on the area that blood was coming out of as I could and then started running. And I'm too old and fat to run half a mile. It was mostly uphill to give me some credit. Uh, but I was running as fast as I could while still trying to hold on to Smudge and Tui was following along behind us. And I got to the car and I was, oh, I was <laughs> gasping for breath. Got him in the car, sort of, got, I had a white towel, so trying to clean off to see how much damage was on him. Yeah, and there was, he had some puncture wounds and it, the, the, that actually opened up, he had opened up the, um, the chin here and there's blood coming out of there. So I, I got on my car and, and we started heading towards the animal hospital. And I rang the hospital and, and said, look, I've got an emergency coming. Can you guys wait for me, be ready for me? And I was trying to drive as quickly and smoothly while still holding on to smudge and, and keeping the blood from, from flowing. And, this, and the lady at the animal hospital kept on asking me these inane questions, which I guess in, in normal circumstances I'd be perfectly fine to answer. But I was, I was, she was, did the raccoon show any signs of abnormal behavior? And, and I was, oh my God, I didn't stop and have a coffee with it afterwards. So yeah, I couldn't, I was, look, can I just answer these questions later? Hung up. And we got there, and they were super good. They were waiting for me. They collected Smudge out of the car, and they took him inside and started patching him up. And I couldn't come in, unfortunately, because of the COVID-19. They won't let people in. Uh, so I was sitting in the car, and I was looking around, and the inside of the car looked like, a little bit like a crime scene because of how much blood both me and Smudge had, had spread around the place. And I was wondering what to do next. So I, I rang my uh, ex-girlfriend, Vanessa, who's a doctor, and I said, uh, I told her what had happened, and I said, do I need to do I need to put some cream or something on my cuts? And she's, no, you need to go to the ER immediately. Uh, rabies is not going to improve your personality at all. And I was, oh, okay. So I went to the, the ER in Norwalk and I was a bit nervous because, you know, I don't want to be in a hospital with this and during these, these troubled times. But I was the only one there. Uh, it was a rainy day and they sort of have the COVID-19 stuff in a tent on the side. So I was in the ER and I was all alone. I, and I walked in. And I, and I looked like, I don't know, like, like some sort of gunshot uh, victim because I had blood all over me. And I looked much worse than I was, whereas, you know, I only had a couple of puncture marks in my hand, really, and a, and a scratch on my other hand. Uh, and so they, they cleaned me up, and sure enough, yeah, I had to have rabies shots. In fact, I forget whether it was five or seven rabies shots. It was a lot. Uh, yeah, in my legs, in my arms, in my hands. Uh, all, over, all over my body, they were sticking those, those painful <laughs> rabies shots in, and a tetanus shot just for, just for laughs. Yeah, they, so they cleaned me up, and they were awesome. That was fantastic. And then I headed back and uh, picked up a little smudge from the animal hospital, and they'd, they'd sewed him up and uh, uh, dressed him and um, gave me a bunch of pills and painkillers and antibiotics and so forth. Uh, but, yeah, I got him back in the car, and he was super pleased to see me, um, you know, he, 
It'd be interested to see whether he's learned anything from this experience, but yeah, I don't know. Anyway, we got home and I was exhausted. So we just lay down and Smudge came and lay down next to me. And I took a photo and then we had to sleep for an hour. And, and after that, you know, he's, he's been fine. I got a little bit of bruising on my hand from punching that poor raccoon. Uh, but I, I, feel ba I even feel bad for the raccoon because it did nothing wrong. You know, it's, and because it's my fault. I wasn't controlling my dog. It wasn't the raccoon's fault. He was just defending himself. Uh, so, yeah, I've got to work on how to better safeguard Smudge from chasing every goddamn animal that he sees because he's going to get himself killed. Yeah, I'm just glad that he's fine. Tui, Tui, I don't know what Tui is doing during the fight, but for the rest of the day, she's just following me around, looking at me. And, and Smudge hasn't been more than two feet away from me since the incident, so he's obviously got a bit of a shock as well. So maybe he's learned something from it. Anyway, the only small victory from this whole drama was uh, those of you that follow me on Instagram and other social medias know my love of naked gardening. Well, after they cleaned me up at Norwalk Hospital and gave me my injections, the nurses said, oh, you can't, you can't put your jeans back on. They've got too much blood and stuff on them. So <laughs> I got to walk out of that hospital, no pants on. Mm -hmm.